is doing for spastic vocal cords other than saying this is what you should do. And, and you're they're not a you're, balanced you're concern, story. Your concern about the New York Times is that they're giving false and misleading information mm. and maybe I mean, it sounded to me like you, you're even wondering if the source would, they would not identify their source, that there perhaps there's a reason why they are refusing, like Miller refused, to identify her source of the WMD in all her articles. And now the, the source, of course, of who outed Valerie Plame, the wife of Joseph Wilson, mm -hmm. ex-Iraq ambassador, that she's a secret, you know, that she's a covert CIA operative. That's the thing that may bring the White House down. But in your case, with the spasmodic dysphonia stuff, mm -hmm. all you wanted to get to the bottom of is how could a writer who has no background in the mm -hmm. field of voice and speech pathology make a statement? Very concise. That Botox very, is giving very, patients. very apropos. It was in almost one like line. A, it was almost like a slogan. Botox. It's an is infomercial. Gi this giving patients with spasmodic. It's an ad. It sounds it's like an ad. It's endorsed by the full authority and guaranteed. By the New York Times, believability yeah. and credibility. That's yeah. what I'm finding. And you're wondering who the source was. Yes. I know the documentation is not relevant for the That he's the provided statements. you. Yeah, that he provided me. Yeah. And this is so a So have we caught the New York Times at another... Uh, in, I think in, it's in a so, gaffe. Is it more mischief on the New York Times? Is this mischief in the sense that the source was a representative from the drug maker mm. who basically has them make a statement that in increases drug sales and the marketing power of an article like that. Yes, I, I think that's what Because none of the reservations were put in. No, there are no, no reservations. It's a blithe statement fully endorsed by the power and strength of the New York Times. That's and, what I'm finding fault, and it's not a balanced story. Yeah, and so the... the and the, they will not report cures of spasmodic dysphonia, although I've documented cures, given them the names of the patients, the names of the doctors, yeah. and who is involved, and they can check, they can investigate. Like Peggy Aiken, who came to me, a representative from the NSDA, National Spasmodic Dysphonic Association, October 14, 2000. She told me, and I taped her with her permission, uh, for three hours, and she told me that she doesn't want me to report cures of spasmodic dysphonia. I've been reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia by direct voice rehabilitation, all naturally, in 1974 at the American Speech and Hearing Association, my field, in 1979, 1980, and a month later in 2000 after she visited me on October 14, 2000, for three hours reporting cures. She didn't want me to report cures. The NSDA newsletter, National Spasmodic Dysphonic Newsletter, says that there are no cures, and they're looking to uh, unmask the medical cause, the neurological cause of SD. My position is that SD is not a medical problem. It's not a neurological problem. It's not a dystonia. It's not a disease. It's simply a misuse of the speaking voice, and I could not report ongoing cures of this condition where it a neurological problem, a medical problem, a disease, a molecular biological problem, a... Uh, a um, acid reflux problem, or any of the theories that medicine yeah. has, has, but never one cure since trial first described spasmodic dysphonia as nervous hoarseness in 1871. Well, I, I want to get back to the, you know, the connection mm -hmm. with the New York Times, and mm -hmm. because I, I think it's illustrating something that's a broader issue, you know, for people who are out there trying to dis to really uh, figure out whether there's accuracy in what they're hearing and mm -hmm. what they're reading any longer. What you're bringing us, you're bringing to the attention, just as one example among many, and mm. I'm drawing your attention to on the WMD issue, is that inaccurate statements and misleading statements uh, were made that seem that seem to um, uh, reflect the uh, prerogative of a uh, organization that markets a product. This is a drug company that wants to get their product out to the market, and they have every right to do so. And you have no problem with that, no. But what you have a problem with is the front, uh, front that page That the New writer. York Times is endorsing it blithely without reservations and ignoring what I've been telling them in writing, that there's another side to the Botox story and the outcome, and that there are cures of the condition contrary to what the medical community, what Allegan, the maker of Botox, and the American Speech and Hearing Association guarantee, 
guarantee there are no cures. So I must be reporting cures of non-existent patients. Right. But these are documented cases diagnosed at UCLA Medical Center, Scripps, Cedars sinai the Mayo Clinic, and the list goes on. Now, do you believe that the New York Times, I mean, has been paid by the drug maker to uh, and assigned a reporter like Donald McNeil Jr., unbeknownst to Donald McNeil Jr., perhaps, that they've been assigned this because the uh, publisher of the New York Times, Arthur Sulzberger, receives a certain amount of money from the drug maker Allergan. Do you believe that? No, not at all. Not one iota. Why? No. Because I, 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 I do not question their integrity. Um, I think they're, they're taking handouts from a drug company. Uh, they're taking handouts by a writer who doesn't know, uh, in a sense, what he's writing about. Do you about know who used saying, the word integrity? Mm -hmm. Do you remember who the last person that used that? You said you don't, you don't question their integrity. No. You know who not said, on this issue. But I want to I tell you who made not that exact money. same statement mm -hmm. was made by um, a, a guy named uh, Elias Zerhouni. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Zerhouni is? Yes, he's the, uh, he's the director of the National Institutes of Health. Now, he was asked if it bothered him mm -hmm. that his researchers, independent medical researchers, were taking a dual salary from drug companies and report, and, and did he think that that had any effect on the outcome of studies mm -hmm. that tended to support what the drug makers mm -hmm. wanted because his researchers are taking dual salaries from mm -hmm. the drug companies. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing. He said he believes he has the in the highest level integrity of his research. I don't believe uh, what he said uh, no, to wait, be so valid. What, but you, you don't believe in, the, in, the, in that, but you believe no. that in the highest level of integrity at the New York Times. Why do you believe that they have more integrity than they, the National Institutes the, of Health? Because uh, they at the New York Times have a love of the medical paradigm. Uh, they believe in the medical profession. They do not allow themselves the possibility that a a lone voice doctor with a Ph.D. and a track record to prove what he's saying there are cures of spasmodic dysphonia could possibly be right. They cannot believe that. It's a David versus Goliath. I'm the only doctor in the world reporting cures of spasmodic dysphonia. And all the medical websites, all the, the information on the Internet, per se, yeah. involving doctors and medical websites, guarantee there are no cures of spasmodic dysphonia. Arthur Salzberger, senior and junior, have every right to take the position that I must be out to lunch. But the problem is maybe they should look again and see if the medical community well, wait, you're not the is on the wrong right track. You, Dr. Cooper, take mm. Dr. Cooper aside, the, mm. the, you know, the, the non-physician going up against the Goliath mm. medical pharmaceutical establishment. Forget that for a second. We're only talking about a front page article mm. that makes a categorical statement that is unsupported by either documentation or by a reference mm. or a source. So that problem that you've identified with them goes to the heart of the credibility of their publication yes, it as, does. It's, as it's been exposed by Jason Blair, now Judith Miller and others, that your example is no different basically than the other major examples that the front page of that New York Times can be influenced by publicly traded corporations, for government sources that are deliberately infiltrating the paper with false and misleading information and the, it's like Maureen Dowd said, you know, Judith Miller said, well, everybody's saying, well, she was duped by the White House or by mm -hmm. Cheney's mm -hmm. office. And Maureen Dowd said, well, wait a second. You know, she could have asked a question. Shouldn't she check out the sources a little bit rather than accepting it lock, stock and barrel? Mm -hmm. Don't you think this, uh, the editors like Cochran and Bill Keller and others who work at the Times have a obligation? They do have it, but they're not taking that responsibility. Thank you, folks, for listening to Botox in the New York Times fascinating story. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think these editors like Cochran here, mm. who's deliberately obfuscating mm. by raising a statement, a question mm. uh, that had nothing to do with what you asked them to no. check on. No, It's the same it, irrelevancy. Well, it's a making a red herring. They're going to, uh, yeah. to, to another path, which is fine. Uh, he's an editor. He knows how to play games with the word. I'm a clinician. I know how to help cure spasmodic dysphonia. I know what they're saying. The statement is uh, blithely wrong. It's not uh, But it qualified. wasn't the statement that you wanted him to investigate, which no, it's is not. why Botox, wh wh why uh, McNeil said that Botox is giving patients with spastic vocal cords back their voices. That's what